Hi, this is Terry. You know, one of my passions for years has been small, medium-sized businesses, helping them as the thriving enterprises that they are to get the information they need to learn about how technology can leverage what they're doing to achieve more. Recently, I had an opportunity to talk about small business and how they can use technology, particularly blockchain and cryptocurrencies, with a dear friend of mine, Roxanne Emmerich. She is a fellow member of the Speaker Hall of Fame with the National Speakers Association, and she runs a company that helps a lot of banks and a lot of small businesses to really implement technology. So she was asking me, Terry, what's some technologies we need? Well, we let the cameras roll. The video that we did was on Zoom, and we're sending this out to a lot of people. I thought you would really like to hear this. There's a lot of good information here, and I wanted to share it with you about technology you can use, how to get that competitive advantage, blockchain, and a whole lot more. Let me know what you think. When you get to the end of this, please leave a comment. I really look forward to your message. And if you want to reach me, you know you can get in touch with me, terry at terrybrock.com. And I'll look forward to hearing from you on that. But enjoy the video, and I will look forward to hearing from you. So excited to welcome you to, to, to this quarter's Chat with the Experts, sponsored by your bank. Uh, and I'm very thrilled to introduce you to a good friend of mine for over uh, two decades. Uh, Terry Brock is the geekiest guy I know, but he's a practical geek. He's one who helps businesses develop further business through technology, through relationship marketing, and he's phenomenal at it. He's always the go-to person for everyone I know to go find out what's new in technology that's working to really develop relationships. Um, and, and so you might want to know that he is the chief enterprise blogger at Skype, uh, which is, tells you a lot about his technology. Uh, at AT&T, when they needed a new editor for their industry award-winning uh, blog, they asked Terry to be the editor-in-chief uh, for the publication. And so they, uh, there he deployed technology to help AT&T build relationships with customers, employees, and stakeholders. And uh, along with me, he's in the Speaker Hall of Fame. Uh, and he's also an expert in cryptocurrencies, blockchain, Bitcoin, and showing organizations how to deploy his new technology for maximum benefit. So he comes to me live today uh, from Zoom, from his headquarters in Orlando. So welcome, Terry. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Great to be with you today, Roxanne. It's so good to be with you. Okay, so I'm so excited because I learn so much every time I talk to you. So, uh, so let's start off with some principles of uh, relationship marketing before we start talking about the geeky things and how all those things work. So fill us in a little bit about uh, what's working today because everybody's spending too much in marketing dollars. Everybody's saying that their marketing dollars aren't proving return on investment. And if they do have a return on investment, it's negative. Um, and so it's a big concern for almost every business because, it, because people are overly marketed too. So having unique ways of, of finding new customers and keeping in touch with your current customers is more important now than ever. So Terry, what are some of the principles that we need to be thinking about first before we start talking about how to use these tools? Well, I think you approach that in the right way because we have so much technology right now that we sometimes feel overwhelmed. We're like, oh no, oh my goodness, we got more technology here. How am I going to handle this? But you know what matters most is this thing that we've had for centuries and it's called people to people relationship. Really building those relationships is what matters most. We sometimes like to think, oh, give me the new trick. Give me the new gizmo or gadget and that will be the thing that will help me win customers. And it's not a new gizmo or gadget or the new social media platform the new Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, oodly boodly or weedly waddly or whatever <laughs> funny name they're going to give it. What matters is you connect with people, listening to them and really helping them with their needs. I like the way that uh, Chris Brogan says it. He says, we need to grow bigger ears. And so we listen more carefully to what people are saying. Now, yes, we'll use the technology. One of the ways we can listen is we follow what they're doing on Facebook. We will listen to their, watch their tweets that they're putting out. We read their blogs, watch their podcasts or YouTube videos, whatever it is. Yes, we use the technology. But the most important thing is we realize it's really all about people, human beings that have needs. And you got to relate to them that way. Okay, so it sounds like it's a folksy approach, not all the polished stuff. And so, so let's start talking about some of the, the, the tools and the gadgets and, 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 and how 
um, a small business. So the average business listening today um, is um, trying to get to more of their prospects in more effective ways. They're trying to stay better connected to their customers in more effective ways. Um, so, so let's get started. Let's, let's talk about a couple things that you're seeing that are kind of cutting edge uh, that would really help um, a small business that, that's listening today to figure out how do you get this done and stand out and be able to attract new customers regardless of what's going on in the economy. Yeah, I think it's important. First of all, we start with that listening idea. Find out what is it that people are looking for. Not just that I think, hi, this is wonderful, buy my stuff. You know, you've got to listen to what their pain is. That means you hang out where your customers are. If we were running a business, say in, uh, I'll pick a year, the 1300s, the 1400s, we would want to go to the local tavern or wherever people that could be our customers hang out. We have the same principle today, just that customers are hanging out in different areas. So you want to go in there and listen to what they're saying and the pain that they're expressing in Twitter and their LinkedIn areas. LinkedIn, of course, very important. And find out what they're doing. What are they saying on their videos? And then, depending on your business, you can provide that for them. And you want to find out where is their need and then what is the best way we can help them to meet that. Like, for instance, someone might, let me just hypothetically say, we've got someone who has a, a dress shop. They might have a retail store. They have clothing. You want to find out what it is people are looking for. And then you think, okay, there's ways that we can demonstrate how to use this. Or here's a new outfit that's new for this season. Or here's something you can use. And uh, there's tools like Instagram would be very good for that. Pinterest, of course. And, of course, YouTube, really important because YouTube is where so much of it, so many of us uh, go today to learn. We go to the University of YouTube to find out what's going on. We also go to YouTube to find out what people are doing. So tools like that would be real important, particularly the visual and the video side. Okay, so imagine I'm not a techie. Um, and yet, uh, there's a lot of technology that's necessary to figure this out. Um, and, and so, tell, okay, so I, I want to produce a YouTube. I want to get it up. I want it to be effective. I want it to um, uh, be powerful in helping attract the exact kind of next best customers. Um, so, what are some of the rules of the game to make sure that I'm not yet in another annoyance? Because I don't know about you, but I get a lot of annoyance emails coming through uh, lately that don't add value to my life, but they... Um, do clutter up my, my, my email box. Um, and, and so how can, how can they produce something like this in a way that they stand out? The key will be you uh, tailor the message with your title to something they want. Like, for instance, if I'm in the market to uh, uh, do some gardening, say it's spring, I need some uh, gardening tools and I need a hoe, I need some of that. Someone come out with a video, a hardware store, saying we've got these new uh, hoes out there, we've got the new garden hoes, we've got the new uh, plows, we've got this, whatever it is that I might need. Now you've got my attention. If, on the other hand, they're saying, hi, we've got uh, just what you need to get ready for winter and it's springtime, you know, you're an annoyance. You've mm -hmm. got to be very sensitive and contextually sensitive to where you are. On YouTube, you can put these out. On, uh, on Twitter, it's more of a broadcast to say, here's what's there and put a link so that people would be able to go and link to it in another place. But uh, find out what people are looking for and then figure out, based on your budget, what you can do. Do you have a budget to bring in a full crew and start producing cam with cameras and all that? Okay, that's good. For many people, they find that with well, a solopreneur, for instance, they could just look into the camera and be able to say, hi, I'm Terry at Terry's Hardware Store. And this time of year, some of you are looking at getting into gardening. Well, there's tools that are available. And matter of fact, here's one right here, and I pull it out and show it to them and let them see it. That kind of sincerity really gets through. It's important because you're connecting with people almost on a one-on-one -on -one basis, even though it's one to many, of course, but by listening to what their needs are and then getting a carefully crafted message that addresses their needs right now is going to be important. So Terry, let's talk about one-to-one -one for a second, because sometimes it's like there's just four or five businesses that you really want to do business with. Um, and so you really do want to be one-to-one. -one. You do want to speak only to them. Uh, and, and so what's a great way to, to get their attention and to get them paying attention to you so it doesn't come across as something that's one to many? 
I think what you want to do is you want to let them know it's about them. Now, if you met a person, let's say hypothetically, you've met someone in a Chamber of Commerce meeting and you know that they are interested in the uh, soccer team over at uh, Central High and you know about Central High a little bit, you know that they're doing well in soccer, et cetera. What you might do and consider is send them not just a note, nice to meet you, but send them a video where you can look in the camera and you can say, hey, I heard that they are, they're doing this and just Coach Smith over there at Central High showed that they're doing this. I found a picture that I thought you would like. Here it is. And you can bring that up on tools like uh, uh, iTunes, uh, the tools that are available on the Mac and on the Windows side. that are already there. Windows Movie Maker on the Windows side is available. And uh, I use a tool called Camtasia. It's pretty easy to learn and uh, very easy to get into. But you create that and then show them that video. That's a way you're using the technology, but you're relating it to what they're interested in, knowing they're interested in the uh, soccer team over at Central High School. Then you build that relationship. They know that you're a human being that has more interest than just selling your hardware at uh, Terry's Hardware Store. But then as they uh, realize, okay, we've got some needs for that. Terry, you've got a hardware store. What would you recommend for da 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 Then I could at that point say, well, we've got a choice of options here and here. Come on over or I can show you what we have via video. By mm -hmm. deploying the right sources and having a little bit of knowledge of video, it's kind of like being able to have this technology called a car so that if someone says, can you come over and see me? You don't have to go through a whole lot. You just get in the car. You know how to do it. You turn the key on. You drive over to that side of town, and you're there to see them. Use the technology in order to help people. Okay. So imagine I'm a manufacturing firm, and, uh, and, and, and I've targeted the one business we really want to do business with. They're our number one prospect for the year. And so if I shoot a video um, on Camtasia, and I, um, and I start off the video by, by saying, uh, um, in working with businesses just like yours, we're finding this issue and this issue and this issue. And doing research on your company, we found this and this and this about you. Uh, and, and I believe that because you probably have this issue, that there's a solution that could be uh, very cost effective and, and could be, you know, you can rectify this uh, um, as quickly as possible. And so please call and let's talk about this. And so it would be an introductory piece. How do I get them to open up the email and show them that this is a video that was designed just for them because they're getting, you know, 200 emails that day um, and most of them are junk. And so how, how, do you, how do you take that technology? What can you do to stand out to make sure that that video then is consumed? That is the most important question because it's not like we lack for videos or we're lacking for email. We've got so much that we need something that's going to stand out and the title is so important there. I would find out from that manufacturer, they might say, you know, we've got a problem with our conveyor belts that are breaking all the time. Then I would probably send an email, something like repairing or trouble with conveyor belts, this solution works. Or what five people are saying about conveyor belts that's revolutionary new that you can use as well. Something that is going to directly address their need. And that means you can't just uh, send out the same thing to everyone. You want to make sure that it's customized and highly tailored to them. The beauty of where we are today is you can customize and do it pretty easily if you know a little bit of what to do. You do have to pay the price. You've got to pay the price in terms of time, money, and energy to learn something or have someone out there that can take care of this for you, that does it real easily. This is why God invented high school kids. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. All right, that explains it. There's, there's the reason. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and you get them to help you. They go, oh, we could do it. Da, 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 da. You know, many times I talk to my clients that are executives. I say, you shouldn't do that. Let me show you what is happening just so you'll know what to do. You need to know how to look in the camera. Don't look over here and talk to me like this all the time. You know, you need to look into the camera like that so that I can see you and make sure that I can hear your voice. It's coming through well and all that for video. But what you want to do is get somebody else that can do the editing on that. You can do that, let the, the high school kids, and seriously, I mean that, high school kids or community college or someone that's doing this, they're very conversant with this many times, and you find someone, pay them well, and make sure they are uh, feeling uh, real good about it, and then you've got a tool there to deploy all of those resources and go into that manufacturing facility and become a real resource for them. Not just someone that's selling a bunch of stuff, but you're a resource and they need you. And they're thinking, wow, we really need Roxanne and her people here with us all the time. Kind of like you've done with your clients, Roxanne. They feel 
They need you because you take care of the needs they have in a real way. You're studying what they're going through. You're giving them real world answers. It's not just a cookie cutter to say it's one, you know, and everyone can use this, but it's something that's really customized for them. Okay, so let's talk about some of the new, newest, coolest gadgets that can be used because I want people to understand um, what are some of the tools they can be using to um, um, be able to connect with their customers uh, because you know people want to see something cool and new and different. Um, and, and so, uh, so what are some of the tools that they should have, uh, and how do they use them? Well, you have about four hours. Uh, so we let's can, go. Let's go. Let's go. No, there's so much out there. It is. Let me go to one we're using right now. For instance, we're using Zoom. Z O O M available at zoom.us and you think I'm selling it or something, but uh, this is a really good little tool. And by the way, Roxanne, how is my audio? How's my video coming through? It's just great. It's perfect. It's and it's like almost fun. like we're right here. I can see you. I can hear you clearly. You're coming through beautifully. And you think about it, even though you're in Minneapolis, I'm over here in Orlando, long way. It's almost like we're sitting across at a conference table talking. I came over. We had our meeting. We talk about what we want. And then I say, thank you very much and move on. We're able to do that today. So something like Zoom. I recommend as a good tool. It gives you the ability to create a, a video like we're doing here. Uh, we're recording this. That's built into Zoom. You click one button and it gives you a brilliant MP4 video and a very clear M4A audio. So that way you can use that talking to people. Now think about this. Those of you that are watching this, you're in business, you've got your customers, you want to reach them, find out what their needs are, and then you can find an industry expert. Let's go back to Roxanne's example of manufacture. And let's say there's a problem with the conveyor belts. What you might do is being in that industry, you would probably know someone who's reasonably good with conveyor belts and the different kinds that are there, the various features bring on someone that uh, is good at that. It might be uh, Dr. Sharon Smith, and she's over in the University of Washington. Well, if you know her through uh, connections, through uh, con you've been to trade shows, conventions, et cetera, and you know her, ask her to be a guest. And then you ask her what's going on with conveyor belts, because that's her area of expertise. And now you make that available, that video available to your customer, who is there in the manufacturer who's having trouble with conveyor belts, they're going to not only watch that, they're going to be very grateful to you. The key is you take the technology and don't just say, hi, here's a wonderful video, watch this. It's free. Well, everything's free, except it's not free because it costs me my time and it's costing me the energy that I'm having to put into it to watch it. But if you're going to solve a problem that I've got in my manufacturing facility with conveyor belts and you've got an expert that you're talking to and she's giving me information because she knows it, now I'm going to be more favorably inclined to listen to you. Got it. Okay. So people are traveling a lot for business these days. Um, and so, but the show must go on and the prospects and the clients need to be followed up on regardless. And so, um, so, so what are some tools that you take on the road with you to make sure um, that you're continuing to be in touch with people and that they get what they need? Well, quite a few of the tools I'll take, like I will take my MacBook Pro because I'm using video extensively and I'll do it. But today you can often get by just taking, well, here we are in my office, one of these guys, your cell phone. And I find there's so much power packed into this. Get to know some of the apps that are out there and get to know those. And also I bring a little microphone that I can plug in here so that I can create videos Clip the mic on, you get better quality that way. Clip it on here and talk into the, uh, the uh, cell phone and you're able to stay in touch with people that way. Okay. I find that really helpful. I also like my iPad. Here, let me reach over and grab this. And what my, microphone are you using, Terry? Because I know you, know you have the coolest gadgets. Oh, what yeah, I like it. Using right now. Well, I'm using right here the, the, my iPad. This one's got a little keyboard with it. So I can take this. And of course, for reading, it is fabulous. I like to read a lot. And I would use that extensively because it gives us the ability to uh, do a lot. And then I use a headphones. Let me see if I have some. Oh, one moment. Here we are. Reach over. And these Plantronic headphones, they've got really nice uh, noise canceling on there. If you're on the road a lot, you know about airplanes, that motor that's in the airplane, even when there's no turbulence, it's a smooth flight going along, that wears on your nervous system. When you put uh, headphones like this on, turn on the noise canceling, you just kind of zone out and go into your own world there and have a good time because arriving feeling refreshed is really important. 
It's actually a competitive advantage. So using that would be very important. One thing that I use also extensively, my partner Gina told me about this and I'm really grateful. We've got some Max, M-A-C-K-S, Max Ear Gel plugs that are really nice. They form to your ear and to the unique contours of your ear and they block out probably about 98% of the sound. Hmm. That's important on the airplane, put those in, put my earphones on here, and that way I'm knocking out the sound, I can get some rest on those long flights, and particularly, Roxanne, you can relate to this, you know that time you've been in the hotel and they're having the motorcycle convention right next door at two in the morning, and they're making all kinds of noise or knocking around Mm -hmm. or whatever kind of nonsense they're doing, and you've got a commitment you have to be up for tomorrow morning, you're trying to get sleep, earplugs like that really have helped me a lot. Because even though it might not knock out all of the noise, something like that can be real helpful. So it's not super technical, but those kind of earplugs, the the squishy kind that go in your ears, do it, I find to be extraordinarily helpful and beneficial. Yeah, okay. So so what about um, tools to stay in constant contact with your um, customers and, and, and prospects in terms of CRMs and mailing programs and uh, so, so tell us what's new, tell us what's different, tell us what to be looking for. Uh, it, it seems like uh, right now we're, we're talking, we, we've had the same CRM for the last 15 years, we're probably going to be switching in the next few weeks, God help us, um, and um, so we're, we've got to narrow down to two at this point. But it seems like every business is looking for the next gadget that will really make sure that they're uh, clients are followed up on, that the systems are easy for their team members to follow, um, and that um, it meets the needs uh, of most businesses. So so what are you finding besides CRMs and, and other things like that? What kind of tools are really cutting edge right now uh, that can take advantage of ways to, to stay in better contact? Well, there's several that are out there, and there's no one system that, wow, everyone should get it. There might be one that's good for this company, another that's good for them. So find the CRM, that customer relationship management tool that's right for you. One I'm using that I really like is called Nimble. N-I-M-B-L-E, Nimble, and it's very reasonably priced, like $15 a month for a user, but it gives you the ability to, yes, keep all the names, addresses, and all that, but more importantly, it zeroes in on social media so that it finds that person, then brings up all of their Facebook information, Twitter, et cetera. That way, a salesperson is going to go to that manufacturing facility. They're going to call on uh, Mary Smith, and Mary Smith is uh, vice president of this or that, and they're meeting with her. Well, go over and look at Mary Smith's, what she's been doing on Facebook, on Twitter, what's going on in her life. Looked on LinkedIn. It ties all those in. I kind of like Nimble for that particularly. And it gives me the ability to create notes so that I can, uh, I can put in a note. Hey, I just talked with Mary. She's interested in this, but they're not going to be moving forward until March the 13th. So be sure and call her on March the 13th. Little things like that that help. And by the way, another tool that I use in conjunction with that is the one I'm using is called Text Expander. There's other tools like uh, short keys that work on the Windows side that give you the ability to take common phrases that you say over and over and you condense them down into one little uh, snippet that you would create. So, for instance, if you want date and time, I've got that plugged into my computer that I type T-T-D-D as time and date. Now, you would normally not type those four letters next to each other. But when I do that in my computer, the program says, put in the current time, the current date. Does it very nicely, saves me the hassle of typing it in. Also, sometimes you're going to have a standard signature that you want to use. You might have one signature you use for some purposes, another signature for others. Well, what I do is I type four keystrokes that normally would not be together. And then up comes all the thank you very much, Terry Brock, and all the information that I would normally put in there, but I can customize it. So I would use that to stay in touch. I can use that with my CRM and stay in touch that way. Another tool that helps to stay in touch with people and to keep an office organized is the Google series. We use Google Docs and Google Drive extensively. So that way we can share information using one Google Doc for everyone or one spreadsheet. So we all go to that and we see what it's like. And when one person changes it, everyone else can see that change. In a way, it's similar to, it's slightly different than blockchain. 
which is why blockchain has been so popular. Everyone can see what's going on. And if someone makes a change, everyone can see that change that happens. So using those kinds of tools can help you to move ahead and to uh, make sure that you're really using those tools and deploying that technology to serve people even more. We're going to come back to blockchain because I know you're an expert on that. And I'm sure there are people who are very curious about that and how that's going to impact their businesses. So I want to make sure that we have set some time at the end here to come back to that. Um, so, so that's very helpful. And, and what are you finding in terms of, um, so, so for people who have larger teams, say that, say that they have 50, 100, 200, 700 employees. Um, so what, what kind of tools are good tools for um, them to manage their, the productivity within the organization um, that you're seeing that would be beneficial for them to be considering uh, as a way to maybe help them save things down in a more effective way, maybe to control things in a better way. Uh, I just was reading uh, in USA Today, there was an article about look out small businesses. This is the, 2018 is the year that um, you're going to be targeted by um, the people who are come, uh, for, for fraud and, and that type of activity. That's really scary as a small business owner to think you can get your checking account wiped out in a day um, or different kinds of things that, you know, when, when you don't have the proper protections. So, so what kind of things are you seeing businesses use to manage their business, protect the business, protect from fraud? Because uh, we're living in a world right now that if any small business owner isn't scared out of their mind, they are not paying attention to what's going on around them <laughs> because there is so much besides, you know, between PCI compliance fines and, and uh, you know, all kinds of things that just give you the woolies thinking about that. There's, there's just a lot of ways that a really well-run company that's been run well for 50 years and seeing a lot of cash can get wiped out overnight. Um, so what kind of tools are you seeing people use to, to build protections, um, to improve, improve the efficiencies? What, what's, what's new and great? Well, you want to make sure, first of all, that you're keeping your password safe. And having a good password program and a good password policy is important. Uh, there's a lot of different tools out there. I'm using one called LastPass, which is a very popular one, very good for keeping track of it. But the most important thing is to remember, when you create a password, you do not want to use something that I would know if I knew you well. So if I know your dog is named Spot and you think, oh, I'll just use Spot on everything, not a good thing. You know, because it would be very easy to find that. You want to use some tools that are going to help you on that. So a password organizer and sometimes you don't want to put it on the net at all. Because sometimes you put it on the net, uh, there's going to be a danger that bad guys can get it. That's where, like we mentioned blockchain, that's one of the greatest benefits of it is the security that's there. Because we see a lot of things that have happened. Look at what happened recently with Equifax, where 143 million people lost uh, what was going on. Not only do we know your name is Roxanne Emmerich, but we also know your social security number. Oh, your mother's maiden name, your first car, your favorite first pet, et cetera. Et cetera. Those kind of security questions that they're asking, all of that came through. So what you'll want to do is make sure you check your passwords and change them regularly. By regularly, quarterly. Different, I'm not a security expert, but uh, security experts will tell us, hey, this is something that you need to do on a regular basis. And the, realize the biggest threat that you have. You talk about that company that might have uh, seven, 800 employees. The biggest threat is those past employees or current employees as well. So you want to make sure you put the measures in place. I would say have a good relationship with people and firms that can handle security. I agree with you. In 2018, we're going to see a lot of concern about that even more. And we see that right now, for instance, you realize with your cell phone, when you have it turned off, like mine is turned off right now, they still can monitor what's going on audibly and visually. Remember listening to an interview with uh, Alan Dershowitz, the lawyer from Harvard, and John McAfee. And John McAfee was telling him, yes, we're coming out with new phones now that he is making because with your iPhone, with your Android, you're vulnerable. He said, and Dershowitz said, ooh, that's right, because I remember when I went to the White House, we had to leave all of our cell phones, tablets, any devices in a safe surrounded by lead and couldn't mm -hmm. even bring them into the room where we were having discussions because it is monitored, not just can be, but it, it is. And that's where you know, we can't go with the old saying that some people say, well, I have nothing to hide, so I don't have to worry. But really, you have nothing to hide? People that would say that, I have a question. Would you please then give me the codes to your bank and your password too, please? 
You know, those are the kinds <laughs> of, no, yeah, you want, there are certain things you do want private. There's conversations you have with your spouse, with your children, with dear friends. You don't want the world knowing that. You want these things, privacy. It's very important. And so take it on yourself to make sure you have the right policies. And then we find the technologies that will help on that as well. But a big part of it is making sure you have it turned off. Many people now realize on your laptop computer, find something that you put over that webcam because they can watch you. They can see what you're doing. They can monitor keystrokes that you might type. And so I think the first thing is awareness. Be aware of what's going on. Realize there's a lot of bad guys out there that we need to stay away from. We want to be careful in what we're doing. And it's a smaller world today. People that might be here, I've got my globe behind me. They could be here or here or here or here or we're all over, all over the place. And it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, it's everywhere, all over. So you just have to, you don't get scared about it and go, oh, no, I can't do anything. No, but what you want to do is maybe uh, think about not putting something on the net. For instance, sometimes you want to do calculation to add them up. You might not want to do that on a computer, which could be monitored. Remember these old things? They cost you like a dollar and you get them at a store and you can use these. Some of these are now being deployed by governments like the German government who's using this now when, because they realized the United States government was snooping on them. The United States government the bad guys. That NSA called the National Security Agency, not the other one that you and I know, Roxanne, but the National Security Agency out there snooping and looking at, and literally governments around the world are now going back to that form of communication, that form for many different tasks. Not everything, but some. So uh, it might be scary, but it's been that way throughout history. There's always been a leapfrog. Uh, we get secure here, and then the bad guys say, hey, I could get them if we do this, and they jump up here. And they go, uh-oh, the bad guys are here now. we got to come up here, and they jump up here. So it, there will always be that leapfrog. There will always be that time of we've got to spend our time, money, and energy investing in taking care of ourselves and keeping secure. Got it. Okay, so now you get me scared. Um, uh, appropriately, <laughs> a little bit of it is okay. <laughs> if you're not paranoid enough, you're probably in trouble. Um, okay, so um, so so I'm getting the security thing. Um, how about efficiency in the workplace these days? Um, and so everybody's being asked to do more with less, faster with fewer, and better than ever. Um, that's the theme everywhere that we go. Um, and so, what what kind of tools are out there that you're seeing that are very effective in helping teams? relate to each other better, um, connect better, um, file things more effectively, and what, what, what's powerful that's working right now? There's a lot of tools that are out there. One of them that many people are using, and I think you're using this as well, is Slack, S-L-A-C-K. It gives you the ability to more than just an email back and forth. You're keeping track of what's going on in the various different areas. I remember uh, at Skype, we would have teams working on certain projects. So what we would do is we'd use the multi-channel uh, communication, and we would just keep that running. That way, we would keep it going. Sometimes it would be just for an afternoon. Sometimes it might be for a few days. There are other times we had some projects that would go for months at a time. And we might need someone coming in from Estonia. Skype's got a big office in Tallinn, Estonia, and we'd bring them in. They'd work with it for a while. Well, they could then go back and see what has happened before. They could read up on that, come up to speed on that PDF that they need to read, or that video that was really critical that we did two months ago on this project. They could go back there and see it. Slack is a really good tool for something like that. Discord is another tool that a lot of people are using for communication. And I'm seeing that on tools like Steemit, or using a, that's S-T-E-E-M-I-T, steemit.com, where uh, it's a way for creating content and where content creators can get paid for their content creation, actually get money for making a video or writing. And Discord is a tool that lets people communicate on the side to each other. And uh, other tools like that, I think, are very important to maintain the communication. And again, Google Docs are real good for this as well. I did a uh, big charitable event uh, just a few months ago where we brought in people from around the country, and we had a Google Hangout we were going to do at one time to raise money for this charity. We did. By using Google Docs, we were also able to keep in touch with ideas and new information we were going to send out. That worked very well, kind of like Slack. Slack does it. We went, by the way, we did that using the technology. We had uh, 14,000 people joining us around the world. We went for eight hours on Google Hangout and raised $50,000, 100% of it going to that charitable organization. And uh, the technology gave us the ability to get all that done. Hmm. Fascinating. 
Okay, so Terry, you're always the, the gadget guy. You always have about 25,000 gadgets in a bag somewhere. And up to 26,000 now. Yeah, yeah it's like ridiculous how far uh, you are into those kind of things, um, which is great. And, and what uh, is always interesting about you is you're a very curious human being. And so in the non-gadget world, but kind of gadgety in a way, um, blockchain has been intriguing to you uh, recently. And I know that you've been speaking a lot on blockchain recently. So let's just start by saying... What the heck is it? Um, just give us, you know, talk to us in fourth grade language here for a second, just to make sure we're all getting the fundamentals. Because I think a lot of people are, are so confused by the whole thing, they, they don't even know where to start asking the questions. So, so what is blockchain? Blockchain is very important. It's a technology that was developed a few years ago, and it's kind of like a database. We're familiar with databases. You can put information in there and have a list of names and you would have all that there. Imagine you have a database on your computer and you've got names that are really important. If I need to get access to that uh, and you want me to get access to it or whatever, there's ways that we can make that available, but it would be on one place. What they've done now with blockchain, it came up with a tool that was developed in uh, 2009 by a person named Satoshi Nakamoto, or at least that was the pseudonym. It might have been a group of people. It might have been one person. We don't know. And Elon but, Musk just came out and said it's not him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, uh, nice. Elon, there's a lot of people saying, no, it's not me. And some one person actually came out and said it is me. <laughs> So, but what they did is they had this blockchain underlying this tool called Bitcoin. But blockchain can be used in many different ways, and it's really using a distributed ledger technology. And what that means is you've got not just one computer that has all the information, but they make a copy of it on lots of computers, thousands or hundreds of thousands of computers, and it cannot be changed once it's put on there. So we can't go back and say, you know, Roxanne, you never told me that. Uh uh. Every computer has to agree with it by using this really brilliant technology called blockchain. And that way, you keep track of what's there. And what it is, it's like if I say, I want to, you and I are going to agree to do, uh, do a particular task. You're going to do this. I'll do that. And we're going to do it on this date and this. And the temperature has to be here or we have to have this has to meet. We're going to need it in this place. All those details go into a chain or go into a block of information, I should say. It's a block that you put together. And then we chain those together. Hence the blockchain. And it's a way to keep track of information and it's very secure because when you think about, let's go back to uh, the idea of uh, using finance, very, very important. This is where banking is very interested in this and the blockchain applications are enormous. What we can do is we can create this if you had, say, $10 million and you wanted to keep all that $10 million in one place, that becomes what security people call the honeypot. It's a goal for the bad guys to get that one thing. Would they spend a million dollars to access that $10 million prize? Probably. Maybe two million? Yeah. Probably right up to 10 million in order to get that. But what if instead of it all being in one place, we take that $10 million and we put it $1 in 10 million different places? Oh, that becomes a lot tougher for the bad guys. Even if they could break in and get to it, that one, they'd only get the $1. Oh, and then by the way, like with, block, uh, with blockchain using Bitcoin, it, the formulas change every 10 minutes. And so even if you figured it out, 10 minutes later, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. and so you're not able to get in there in one. You can see why from a security point of view, hey, this uh, gets some attention in a lot of smart people in finance, in uh, real estate, in banking, in shipping and transportation are looking at blockchain as a way to really, first of all, save a lot of cost. It's much cheaper to do it that way and deploy the technology. It's far more secure. Matter of fact, here's something interesting. Blockchain has been around since, or, uh, since 2009, and Bitcoin has been there with literally billions of dollars. And there's been many attempts, but never has there been even one successful hack in Bitcoin. People have lost Bitcoin because human error was there. They put all the money in one place. Like famously, there was a place over in Japan called Mt. Gox, M.T. Gox. Someone did things they should not have done with it, but all of it was there. People had stored their Bitcoin in that one location. Not a good thing to do. And then it was stolen. And so it was stolen. But if they had done it the right way, keeping it themselves on their own devices or what we call a hardware wallet, kind of like a USB drive, then the bad guys would not be able to get to it. 
at least mm-hmm. not very easily, not unless they physically go to that place, know where to go, know what to do, and then know the string of, uh, say, 21 piece of words that are the personal keys. So the cryptology that's put into this is really important with blockchain. The enormous, the benefits are enormous on how we may be able to use that. Mm. Fascinating. You know, we're living in such a different world right now. Okay, so um, uh, so uh, there are a lot of small businesses paying attention to you today um, who came on uh, uh, this program sponsored by the bank um, uh, to find out uh, about how to make their business better. And so, um, so, so um, b- before we, I ask you the last question, first of all, Terry, how, how do they find you if they want to have you come speak at one of their community centers or come into their business um, or have you do some coaching and consulting with them? How do they reach you? Oh, it's very easy to do that. Matter of fact, you can see, did you, by the way, Roxanne, did you notice my subtle hint up here in the upper <laughs> corner of the screen there at terrybrock.com? And that for those of you that might be listening to this on audio, that's spelled T-E-R-R-Y and Brock is spelled the right way. B-R-O-C-K. <laughs> Terrybrock.com. You'll see all the ways you can get access to me there through uh, all the social media channels and email terry at terrybrock.com. So that would be the best way to get in touch. Okay, good. Okay, so, so Terry, let's wrap it up today. Um, so you've been a small business owner all of your life. You've been advising small business owners all of your life. Um, and so as we go into the future... Um, and so just like, like it was plastics, young man, uh, there, there was the advice for the future. If, if you were to be advising a small business owner of what they need to be paying most attention to uh, and how they can best make sure that they are on the cutting edge, uh, because in this world, we're not, we're, if we're not disrupting, we're being disrupted. And it's a crazy world that we're living in where great businesses that have been secure and sound and powerful and effective for years are getting knocked on their fanny so fast. Uh, so what would you advise uh, if, if, if you were the, 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 the wise sage um, at the Wizard of Oz, let's call you, um, and they were coming to you and saying, Terry, make sure that my business stays intact. Make sure that I'm advancing my business. What's, what's the most important thing they need to be paying attention to now? Well, I would say, interesting I hear you say that because I have to smile. I just wrote an article. You know, I write for business journals around the country. And I wrote an article about uh, the word for today when it was plastics back in the 60s. And I referenced that uh, film with Dustin Hoffman. And the old man comes out and puts his arm around and goes, young man, plastics. That's the word, <laughs> plastics. Because at that time it was there. And the word today, blockchain. Blockchain is creating today millionaires around the world. The people who are the multimillionaires today are the geeky, nerdy, kind of socially awkward folks that we've seen around the world because they invested in Ethereum or they invested in Bitcoin or Dash or other currencies that are out there and they're doing it. And now we're seeing that you can use blockchain for so many other tools. I've had a chance to talk with people that are using it for shipping being able to keep track of uh, things like shipping. For example, suppose you're shipping fruit from China or Southeast Asia to New York, and you need to have that on the shelves in New York. Think of all that's involved with that. They've got to be kept in the right kind of containers, the right temperature. They need to leave the port on this day. It's going to be this amount of money. All of those kind of uh, tributes go to the contract that you'll have. Today with blockchain, we can build all of those into it so it saves money. You don't need someone, a person, to actually monitor it and make sure everything is done. It's done through the uh, Internet of Things, those sensors we can put into devices, and they register, oh, the temperature went above this or it went below this. We know that, and it's signaled, and then it goes onto the blockchain, and everyone that's involved in that can see what's happening. And then the money can be sent automatically. Think about what happens often that sometimes someone might be in a contract and they realize, okay, I owe you a million dollars according to the contract, but I'm just not going to pay it. Or here's what I'll do. If you pay me, I'll take you to court and it's going to cost you $500,000 to sort through it all. And then we end up, you're only going to get 500,000. So here's what I'll do. I'll tell you, I'll just give you 500,000. We call it even. How's that? And you go, I don't want to. Well, blockchain would not allow that. Because blockchain says as soon as these variables that we both agreed upon are fulfilled by this date, by this time, it's going to weigh this much, whatever the data is that goes into that contract, then the payment automatically goes to you. You don't have to worry about not getting paid. And you don't have to worry if you're the one that's going to pay that the uh, elements are not taken care of. 
All of that is taken care of in a beautiful way, not by people, not by paying fees to really, really smart people who really, really care. Rather, it's done by mathematics. And we're trusting in mathematics, not in other people. So I would say someone going to school right now, learn blockchain. Learn about that. Learn those programming languages. And even if you say, well, I'm not going to be a programmer, fine, fine. You're studying business for us. Be aware of what blockchain can do. It is now changing our world. It's revolutionizing it, and it's only going to increase as we go forward into the future. And I think coupling that, that's the technology. But even more important is the right mindset to be in a learning mode, constantly learning. You and I have known each other for a long time, and you and I both know the importance of constantly learning, reading, listening to good audio, watching um, videos, going to physical meetings where you sit down, you listen to really, really smart people, and they teach you new material. This is what we have to do today. And I think too often people say, well, I did this back years ago. Kind of like when I went to school, you know, I studied politics there. I studied history. I took English. I did this when I was in school as if it were an inoculation. You know, instead, it has to be something that's ongoing and you keep refreshing your mind. Stay up with new. By the way, you live longer that way too, which is just a handy little side benefit to it all. And your brain keeps functioning, according to Dr. Daniel Amen, too. He says, if you just keep learning things that you have no understanding of, which I know you're amazing at, you're Japanese and you called my son to learn how to uh, how he learned um, to speak Mandarin. And so it's yeah, he taught himself <laughs> Mandarin. Right him. Yeah, that's amazing. Tell him I said hello, by the way. I will do that. Okay. So there's a lot of, lot of good out there. I think those two things, look at blockchain, that's current and it's real hot right now. Do your Google searches. Go, by the way, to duckduckgo.com. That's a really good search engine that doesn't keep track of what you've done. Google does. DuckDuckGo says, no, we will not. So if you're searching, whatever it is, you wouldn't want your competitors knowing what you're searching if they broke into your systems. Ooh, look all the times they've been searching on this term. Yeah, duck, 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 quack, 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 Uh, D-U-C-K, D-U-C-K, G-O, duck, duck, go, and you go over there and use that as your default search engine. You're getting the same kind of information that Google has, but you get it in a little different perspective, and also that can give you a competitive advantage because you can find certain items that others wouldn't find who are doing the same search over on Google. So uh, little tips like that can help a lot as you go through it. Fascinating. Well, Terry, thank you so much for spending the time with us today and and investing in the education of the small business owners uh, that are with us today. Um, And and, uh, uh, I'm going to ask all the small business owners to please thank your bank for inviting you to uh, and for their sponsorship of Chat with the Experts and the impact that they make. They are committed out of their minds to making sure that businesses in your market are thriving and growing. And this is one of the ways that they contribute to make sure that, that your community continues to expand and uh, that the businesses within it live to their potential. So again, thank you, Terry. Um, and thank you everyone thank you. for making the line today. Take good Thanks, care. Thanks, Roxanne.